today we are going to be talking about the five themes of geography. But before we can start talking about the five themes of geography, we first need to talk about what is geography. Simply put, geography is a study of where people, places, and things are located and how they relate to each other. This is a very broad, broad term that can encompass a lot of different things, which is why people have broken down geography into five themes. Let's look at each one more in depth. Starting with theme number one, location. Location, simply put, is the position on the Earth's surface. There's lots of ways to describe location. Two of these are relative location and absolute location. Relative location is describing a location in relation to another place. For example, a friend tells you that she is going to Taiwan next week. You reply with, where the heck is Taiwan? You are asking for its location. If your friend were to tell you that Taiwan is off the southeast coast of China, she is giving you its relative location, where Taiwan is in relation to China. Absolute location is describing location using grid numbered lines of latitude and longitude. So if your friend told you she was going to Taiwan and she gave you its coordinates 24 degrees north 123 degrees east she is giving you absolute location. Under to understand absolute location you need to understand lines of latitude and longitude. Latitude measures distances north or south of the equator. In order to understand this, you need to know what the equator is. The equator is the imaginary line at zero degrees latitude. This creates a northern and a southern hemisphere, that is half the Earth. So what I'd like you to do now is to flip to the second page of your notes and locate the equator. If this is where you answered, it is correct. This creates a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. Turn back to your notes. Lines of longitude measure distances east and west of the prime meridian. The prime meridian is similar to the equator in that it's an imaginary line. This time it's a zero degrees longitude. This line runs between Greenwich, England and creates an eastern and western hemisphere. Again, turn back to the map. On your map, locate the prime meridian. If this is what you put down for the prime meridian, you are correct. It creates a western hemisphere and an eastern hemisphere. An easy way to remember latitude versus longitude is by remembering longitude is long and latitude flatitude. Theme number two is place. Probably a word you've used before, but don't really think of as a theme of geography. Place describes an area in terms of its physical and human characteristics. So, a physical characteristic includes landforms, climate, soil, and animals. Things that naturally occur there. Where human characteristics are anything that people bring to a particular place. That includes people's way of life, transportation, religion, and language. So let's play a little game. Is the picture you see a physical characteristic or a human characteristic? If you said physical, you would be correct. How about this one? If you said human, you are correct. The third theme is interaction between people and their environment. Wherever people live, they inevitably change their environment. This might be as simple as painting a bedroom in a new house, or it could be as extensive as creating highways or cities. Some examples of people changing their environment might include the cutting down of trees or deforestation for purposes, whether it's cities, um, fields, whatever the case may be. Either way, these changes that are made 
to your environment can either help or hinder your um, environment. And sometimes there are hidden costs to these changes. For example, people have built highways for easier travel. So going from here to the mall is a lot easier than if these highways were not built. However, a cost of this change is an increase in the amount of pollution. The smoke you see in that picture is called smog. It is a mixture of fog and smoke and is detrimental to the health of people living there. Another example, especially for all you farmers out there, are the use of pesticides. Pesticides are necessary in some cases. It kills harmful insects, whether it's insects that eat the plants or insects that can do damage to humans by carrying diseases such as mosquitoes. But these pesticides can be harmful to humans and other animals and even kill them if they are ingested. So there are hidden costs to the changes that people make to their environment. But just like people can change their environment, they also have the ability to adapt. Adapt means to basically adjust to the different conditions around you. So when you wake up in the morning, if it's snowing outside, you don't walk outside in a bikini. You adapt or adjust to your environment by dressing warmly. Other examples of people adapting to their environment include the people of the Arctic. It's very cold and very dry there, which means few trees and other plants are able to survive. So because of this, they don't have any kind of building materials. Instead, they build their homes out of what resources they have there, ice. Another example comes from China. In parts of China, it's mostly dry grassland, which means they have very little fuel for things like burning, um, for heating, and for cooking. In response, they've adapted in a very delicious way. They've developed a new way of cooking by, cu by cutting up their foods into smaller pieces and stir frying. They use a special shaped pan that evenly distributes the heat and by cutting it up smaller the pieces are easier and faster when it comes to cooking. Theme four is movement and this includes the movement of people, goods, and ideas. Global history word of the year is cultural diffusion. Cultural diffusion is a, uh, an effect of movement. As other people um, move the spread of goods and ideas move from one culture to another. Migration is traveling from one place to another. People and animals migrate. They travel from one place to another. For example, early people traveled out of Africa to find their food, which is why all seven continents are populated. People immigrant immigrate to other countries to find better opportunities to escape war or even to escape poverty. Trade is the movement of goods. Different areas of the world have different resources that others may not. So one country might have a lot of coal but not a lot of steel. So they trade with these other areas to get the goods that they need. These goods are either exports or imports. Exports are goods that are sent outside of a country. They're going to a different country. Where imports are the goods that people bring into a country. These are the things that they need. Along with these goods comes the spread of ideas. That is cultural diffusion. Um, in ancient times, the Silk Road spread ideas. The use of television and the internet is a huge modern example of this cultural diffusion. Take for example this show. You may be too young to remember but this is Baywatch. Baywatch is a purely American show that today is seen over by a billion viewers in over 140 different countries. These trading importing, exporting, leads to an increase in interdependence. Interdependence means that different countries are dependent on the goods, resources, and knowledge from other countries. We are dependent 
on places like Japan for certain electronics, while Japan is dependent on the U.S. for things like food. Theme number five, the last one, is region. A region is an area with its own unifying characteristics. It seems very similar to place. Make sure you keep the two separate. In a region, you can use many different characteristics to unify that particular area. These might include physical characteristics, landforms, climates, etc. So, for example, the rainforest of Brazil, the Adirondack region, um, the Finger Lakes region. These are all identified by their physical characteristics. But you can also use things like cultural, political, or economic characteristics, things like religion, language, or what type of economies or governments they may have. We'll be talking this year about the Muslim world, Middle Eastern countries that are predominantly Muslim. The communist bloc is something that you will learn about in 10th grade, areas in Eastern Europe that practice communism. In terms of geography and how it affects humans, there are many different ways. Here are just a few. Population density, that is how many people are in a particular area. For example, Japan is mostly mountainous. Because it is mostly mountainous, most people are crowded into the fat, flat coastal areas. I will let you read through the others. Can you think of any others? You've been given a lot of information. To help you remember the five themes of geography, I want you to remember this. Mr. Lip. M is for movement. R is for region. L is for location. I is for interaction. And P is for place. Thank you.